Hello and welcome to episode 9 of the Many Worlds Tavern podcast. We did not just record 30 minutes of podcast without pushing record on the audio. Don't mind us. Thank you so much for watching. Um, my name is Chris Porto. I am a tavern keeper at Many Worlds Tavern. And today I have my... I was going to say co-worker, but it seemed a little cold. I don't know why. <laughs> um, a fellow tavern keeper, Catherine Lenahan. What's up, Catherine? Hey, guys. Um, yes. So, uh, audio issues aside, we're excited to talk to you guys. Main topic this week, we're going to pull questions from our Discord server. Many World Tavern has a community Discord. We have a lot of fun there talking about coffee and games and pop culture. And pets. And pets. There's been lots of pet photos lately i finally went ahead and made a pets channel which has increased the amount of pet photos on the chat on the server 20 fold i think so that's been very fun um some movie nerds in there we talk about anime and all kinds of stuff um so yeah if you'd like to join we'll leave a description uh leave a link in the description below but yeah the main, main topic today we have some questions from the discord and this was going to be like a segment in every episode, but a couple of the questions that were asked this week are kind of deserve more time. Yes. So Way that's just it. that's just it. So for we're gonna this week. we're gonna share some main topic time with them. Um, before we get into it, some many worlds announcements. Uh, yeah, Catherine, do you have any announcements? What have you been working on? Um, biggest thing is probably. We'll be reworking some of the old Treasured Realm magic items and coming up with some new ones to match, uh, kind of like individually match each coffee we offer and each tea that we'll be offering. So like those will be available kind of outside of the scope of Treasured Realm, but Treasured Realm will still be getting like the physical cards um, and kind of packings. Then uh, we're also working on play testing some Many Worlds Tavern branded i guess fifth edition um uh, character sheets yes separated out by class um i briefly considered subclasses but that's like far too many <laughs> and way too much work yeah. so i did like the 13 kind of standard classes uh that 5e has to offer we'll figure it out i'm still play testing i've given a couple of my friends some character sheets to see how it works out um work out some kinks make sure that there's not anything crazy that like a completely missed with a subclass or with class features or anything like that um but those will be exciting those are fun nice i love a good character sheet <laughs> um awesome so those will be out soon we're all, we're i mean lots of things are just in service for the t launch um not ready to launch yet lots of work to do ahead but i did find out that packaging is getting shipped today yeah we got the alert amazing um Be very exciting so exciting to get those in hand you can take tons of pictures and taste everything again make sure it's all good get the product pages on the site i'm kind of it's kind of a mountain of a task to rework the website but i'm ready for it i'm excited um and i've been like hyper focused on getting one product page right because i'm gonna have to duplicate it nine times across the t range so trying to get everything right before that happens you've been having some cool ideas though thank you thank you it's um, been fun seeing the little previews yeah yeah and it, and it is really fun that we're leaning more into having lore for the t there's going to be locations on the t like the coffees and the coffees always had a location associated with them but we haven't really built out the lore necessarily for them so we're going to build that out more as well as mm -hmm. the tea um locations yeah even the idea of like the many worlds tavern as like a central yes. meeting place yeah. for like the lore of many worlds tavern yeah um so those are the big announcements recipe of the week this week uh i just brewed up some katuron which is our uh, many worlds taverns treasured realm uh, this month, we still got around like 70, 80 bags, I think. So if you want to pick one up, you have seven more days before it's gone. Uh, the recipe this week, super simple. Just my usual pour over recipe. I did 40 grams in for 640 grams out. 
and um, it only took about three minutes, which can be kind of on the faster side of coffee brewing. But with a coffee this like rich, I think it would balance it out. Um, if you go too long, your richness can become bitterness pretty quickly. So uh, yeah, uh, pretty fast brew today. It's good. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> uh, okay, main topic. Questions from the Discord. Catherine has them pulled up here. The so the uh, first one. Um who you mentioned you said the name out loud earlier and I was like, wow, that's the best way to say it is Hercule. Sure. <laughs> Makes sense to me. <laughs> They're pretty active in the Discord. Yeah. They asked uh if we explained how sugarcane decaf is made. And that they looked it up when we heard about it. When they heard about it from our decaf, from many worlds. Um, but, like, I also don't really understand how sugarcane decaf works. Cool. Um, yeah. So, sugarcane decaf. I guess, to step back, most coffee is not... Um, most decaf coffee has to go through a process of decaffeinating. Um, it doesn't usually grow with low caffeine um so there's some popular methods the one before uh sugarcane decaf the main one in specialty coffee was called swiss water process and that's a process that uses all water basically what happens is you take your green coffee you saturate it with um hot water and extract both the caffeine um, but also the flavor, unfortunately, when that happens, and that becomes green coffee extract. And you do that before it's roasted. Before it's roasted. All, okay. It's all green coffee. Okay. Yeah. Um, then you pass this green coffee extract through a filter that is supposed to take out the caffeine molecules, which I guess are bigger than the flavor compounds in the green coffee extract. You take this filtered green coffee extract back through the process with a new set of green beans, and the idea is that this coffee, this extract is saturated with the flavor, but not the caffeine. So on this next pass, it's just going to pull caffeine from this new set of coffee and decaffeinate it that way. The ethyl acetate is pretty similar, but instead of using green coffee extract, it uses uh, ethyl acetate derived from sugar cane. And most roasters, it's kind of a marketing term now, but we call it sugarcane decaf um but really the compound that we're that's used in the process is called ethyl acetate which is derived from sugarcane it's a naturally uh naturally occurring compound i think you find it in like bananas and apples as well but uh sugarcane decaf sounds better than ethyl acetate for some reason so um the green coffee gets i believe steamed or boiled so that they swell and the silver skin is more permeable and then it gets mixed with this ethyl acetate solution that acts as a solvent for the caffeine. I guess the caffeine bonds to it or something. Um, so yeah, I'm not a chemist or biologist, but uh, I really think the result doesn't lie. I mean, people were already praising Swiss, Swiss water as like a delicious decaf, but it always, in my opinion, always still tasted like decaf, even though it still tasted good. But the sugar cane decaf, I think, is really, really special. For many worlds, it was important we find a good decaf because, you know, game night sometimes goes late and you don't always want caffeine that late. And we're really proud of where Electric Sheep ended up. So that is the process of sugar cane decaf. And Hercule, I believe, said, I feel like it's not that widely known as a decaffeinating method uh, I think that's true. I think most shops are still using Swiss water, so it's pretty exciting to be towards the forefront on on sugarcane decaf. I mean, I don't even think I really understood how decaf worked at all. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's fair. That's fine. <laughs> like even Swiss water, when I was working in the sister like a boomtown coffee or sister company like at the brick and mortar yeah people would come in and like i got pretty de decent at like explaining the difference between like washed or natural process and mm -hmm. like how different regions or different growing conditions can affect the flavor of a coffee and people would be asked about the decaf and i'd be like <laughs> 
it's just like a different water process to like decaf it there you go and just like hope they didn't <laughs> ask any more questions <laughs> or i'd like hand it off to somebody else uh, but yeah that's interesting yep yeah very cool um next question is from 10th walker who's also pretty active in the discord yes i believe an ex starbucks barista so yeah yeah we were talking about barista-ing a couple days ago uh they asked for coffee gear and brew methods as D D classes or alignments and uh i really should sit down and do like different coffees <laughs> as D D classes but that would take me i think longer than a couple of days uh so alignments instead there's only nine <laughs> And it's a little, it's not as like super niche as it is with yeah. classes because everyone's got an opinion about how a class should be played or like what the strengths are, or, like, you know, like, well, how can you talk about rogues if you're not going to talk about sneak attack? And <clears throat> how can you talk about this if you're not going to talk about like this Wizards of the Coast supplement of how they adjust it? Like, there's a <laughs> lot. There's a lot. Um, so we're going to start with neutral. Just true neutral is drip coffee. Makes sense. Makes sense. Yeah. I don't really feel like I need to explain that one. It's just, you know, if you drink if you drink drip coffee, cool. <laughs> A lot of people do. Uh, neutral evil is definitely Keurig. <laughs> Environmental impact alone skews it into evil. <laughs> neutral because i don't know if i like i don't know how i feel about people who drink keurig coffees okay <laughs> <laughs> maybe that's a hot take it's a hot take it's just like i don't really get it i don't get the appeal but to be fair you did say you don't know how to make one yeah which well, i think is wild because you I don't think literally push a button <laughs> I think it's less that I don't I don't know how to make it and l more like I don't understand wh why okay you'd make that I guess like the single serve is appealing but like it's just you're creating so much waste and like I don't know anybody who's like <laughs> made a Keurig coffee and been like this is the best cup of coffee I've ever had it's just very utilitarian I think you know it's like somebody who wakes up and is like, I'm drinking my coffee before I go to work yeah. to have caffeine. <laughs> Neutral evil. <laughs> Neutral good uh, instant coffee. I don't think I really have an explanation for this one other than like, it's coffee. It is coffee. Sometimes it's good, sometimes it's bad. <clears throat> you know, you're taking a chance. Unless you're getting Many Worlds instant well, coffee, and unless it's been since August, but that's <laughs> regardless. <laughs> it's a sore subject. When our instant coffee is available, it's pretty uh, solid. Yeah, um, it's something that I would I would drink. Then into chaotic, chaotic neutral mocha pots, and I don't think I understood mocha pot as like a brewing method in like widespread kind of specialty coffee usage until I was in the shop for a few months and somebody asked me or I was like looking at the grind size on our grinder and I was like what is a mocha pot <laughs> and I googled it and I was like oh I know what this is mm -hmm. but it's because I saw like a lot of like my Latin American friends and like Hispanic friends using it and I was like oh Oh, that's not just like a thing that like somehow every Latin <laughs> ant has. So that's cool. Um, yes. And I, I think chaotic is a good place to put it because it's one of the few methods that you can like not necessarily, it won't explode, but it like can boil over really fast if you leave it alone or, or it's your first time trying it and you don't have it dialed in right. And yeah, uh, yeah it can get kind of chaotic. And you actually, we were talking about it in the Discord a couple days ago, and you sent a video 
mm, um, yeah. about like how to make a good mocha pot. I actually watched it. It was pretty informative. It's pretty interesting. Yeah. It's interesting. Any method that uses steam like that or the siphon, I think it's just kind of like really cool to watch happen. And yeah. yeah, definitely chaotic, neutral, like could be good, could be bad. You know, <laughs> I do enjoy drinking coffee from mocha pots. I just didn't understand that I was enjoying it from a mocha pot <laughs> yeah, until yeah. like maybe six months ago. <laughs> um, but yeah, like some like one of my closest friends in college used to make them all the time when we would hang out mm -hmm. um and he's colombian and would dump a ton of sugar into it as well um but you know more power to you if that's how you like your coffee sure. drink your coffee <laughs> i respect you i appreciate you uh chaotic yeah. evil cold brew okay um and chris asked earlier like i do like iced coffee i like iced drinks a lot but i like milk based drinks more yeah um so like i really like like the ratios of a flat white or cappuccino but iced mm. um i prefer espresso if i'm gonna drink something iced uh, but like if you drink cold brew black <laughs> i'm scared of you <laughs> i'm a little intimidated i kind of like this i think uh because I know you like my, my main idea coffee. is my main coffee order is an uh, iced americano. Um, I don't love cold brew that much anymore. I think it's just a little different from the my preferred flavor profile. But I do like cold coffee, so I like an iced americano. Um, but you but, also like just like iced coffee, right? Yeah, yeah. Uh, but yeah, chaotic evil. I'll take it. I think you know it's kind of like. I, I will wear that, like, you know, like I'm a Slytherin, I'm chaotic evil, cold brew. Yeah. I'll probably. Like, like my friends that I know <laughs> that are like diehard cold brew fans. Yeah. Would not be the first person that I'd called in an emergency. Okay. <laughs> I love them. I love them deeply. <laughs> But they're also incredibly chaotic. Well, because they have to stop by the coffee shop first before. Exactly. They <laughs> <laughs> and you know what? Like, I respect your decision. It just really intimidates me. Uh, so, chaotic evil, cold brew, chaotic good, pour overs. Um, good because I think it takes like time and effort to like go seek out how to like learn how to make a comex or learn how to make any kind of like pour over brew um chaotic because i don't know it just feels like it fits <laughs> it's a lot of pieces yeah it's a lot of things there's a lot of <sighs> not a lot of steps necessarily it's just like a lot like things to keep track of but yeah. there is like wiggle room for like making like a, a chemex for example um <clears throat> yeah i i don't know i don't know if i have much more of a defense for it than that. Got you. Other than that, I felt like it was right. Lawful, lawful neutral, we have espresso. Mostly because the majority of people who are going to go into a coffee shop, whether it's specialty, whether it's, you know, chain, whether it's local, whether it's whatever, um, there's a significant amount of people that like get just drip coffee. But most people are just ordering like some kind of espresso based drink. Maybe not necessarily espresso by itself, uh, but like lattes, flat whites, cappuccinos, cortados. It's like 90% of what you're doing mm -hmm. at, at least what I felt like I was doing when I was <laughs> in a shop. And like, I really like espresso drinks. Typically, my drink of choice is like an iced flat white um i like the flavor of espressos a lot i'm not typically in the mood to like just drink espresso but like i also really like milk i'm a dairy person and i'm sorry <laughs> but it's just who i am <laughs> i don't think i'm gonna change until my body decides it can't take lactose anymore uh but yeah lawful neutral espresso People are going to go in, they're going to get their latte, they're going to leave. 
they're gonna go on about their day i appreciate you yeah lawful evil um wild card for this one energy drinks if you're an energy drinker energy drink drinker like consistently like every day or like it's a part of your routine schedule um you also scare me same kind of camp as cold brew um but yeah i just it's so much (laughs) it is so much and we were saying earlier i I have been that person i have been an energy drinks person yeah and what did you Um, say when i asked you did you feel like that phase of your life was lawful evil it was a bit of a blur i think uh it was good i mean i think i like them i mean i like the concept of them still but on top of coffee it's a bit much and then yeah just over time i've become more sensitive to caffeine to where Mm -hmm. i don't really drink them i definitely don't drink them as like a routine thing i think if i would needed to like pull an all-nighter i would consider it maybe um but yeah i'm past that phase yeah i will say on record i think the zero calorie white monster is like one of the best drinks in existence (laughs) it's almost perfect (laughs) um so what does it taste like uh fruits that are indistinguishable from each other and chemicals so is it just like the grown-up version of like think about this it's a fruit flavored drink okay and it's the can color is white and it's kind of like a cloudy like white liquid and it's like i don't like that. so there's no really a fruit that matches plus <laughs> if you've mashed fruit all together would it be white i don't think so why is it that color that's so concerning exactly <laughs> <laughs> okay it's so good <laughs> it hits the spot lawful evil like yes it is evil though don't get i was wrong. saying so what am i like my best friend her drink of choice if it's like a late night if we've gone out if we've like gone to dinner we're out with friends um typically she'll get like a vodka red bull if she needs to rally or if like we're going to another place um (laughs) and like there have been times where she has gotten a vodka red bull and then (laughs) taken charge to make sure everyone gets home you know like it is very much like intimidating but like we all make it home (laughs) i think evil is a good spot to put it too in the sense of evil like that antiquated definition of evil of like unnatural or out of this world yeah like a a white zero calorie monster is like the opposite of food it's just like not (laughs) food it's just not something that could be yeah yeah it's a little scary yeah yeah (laughs) <laughs> uh, and then last but not least, we've got Lawful Good. And I put French presses and arrow presses uh, together in this one. Um, lawful because there's like a lot of rules. Mm. At least in my concept concept of what an arrow press, more, more so than a French press, should contain. Um, and good because like, you know they make good coffee like you're, mm. you're treating yourself to like a good cup of coffee but like there's a lot that goes into it and i don't think i have the patience for that to like learn all of it perfect it make it consistently yeah but i appreciate you so much if that's what you drink there you go that's interesting i think we gotta get some air presses made yeah. i th- i think aeropress the culture around aeropress is actually not that lawful in that, uh, yeah, I'm not sure if it's as rules. Uh, that's interesting, the perception as far as a lot of rules. Because have you? do you know the history of the World Aeropress Championship? No. But this is also, like, I have never actually made an Aeropress. Yeah, yeah. We gotta, so this is, we like, this is like, a very much an outsider. Like, <clears throat> they're, like every day I come yeah. into work and I think I they say something about coffee that I don't understand. And I'm just like... <laughs> <laughs> basically the world air press championship is a big event now but it started when these three dudes in europe made like did like a little air press competition and they were just taking the piss and called it the world air press championships <laughs> just and three guys it was just three people i don't even know if it was just like 
a planned event. They just called it that. And I think that is the origin of the World Air Press Championships. So that mm. said, everyone brings their own recipe and it's totally different. So I, I like the Air Press as a concept and the culture around it. I like that it's like this ugly plastic thing next to all this fancy glassware. Um, yeah. Yeah. But that's great job with your list. I think it's awesome. Yeah. I do think it'd be fun to kind of make this more extensive and do some of like subclasses. <laughs> yeah. But that would take a lot of brain power in arguing with myself about what fits where and why. Um, nice. And then it's like, well, what, like, what do I do with the people? Like, what do you do with the people who like really like pour overs, but like have never actually looked at a recipe? Because like that's crazy. That is people. Yeah. You know, like people do that. Um, yeah. Okay. Anyways, feel free to disagree. <laughs> yes, please comment with your disagreements. <laughs> we should make a little chart for it, too. Okay, let's do it. It's Find the official photos. Many Worlds Tavern stance. Okay. We might have to make some. No changes. Okay. <laughs> 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 Next question. Next question, uh, Corey asked, um, we actually got to meet Corey in Indianapolis. That was super fun. Um, yes. He asked, best games to play at a coffee shop alone or with friends? Yeah. Corey is also an ex-coffee person, so. Yeah, he's been big on, uh, he, he <laughs> got Third Wave Water, right? That's yes, he's been asking with that. That's so he's been fun. kind of like sharing his experience with it in the Discord, which has been pretty cool. It makes me like. I don't have I don't have any brewing equipment at home at all. I mean I have stuff for tea, but that's it. It makes me want to get it. Just so I can like see <laughs> what happens. Yeah, for what's a rabbit hole. Just, I'm very intrigued. Yeah. Um Best yeah. games to play at a coffee shop, alone or with friends. I figured you'd probably have some. Have you ever played an RPG in a coffee shop? Is there anything short enough that you play? I don't know. I mean, I've definitely played like video games, mm, like Switch stuff. Yeah, in coffee shop. Like I've like played Paper Mario. Okay, and that things like that at video game at um ca- uh, <clears throat> coffee shops. But yeah. sometimes I like I get intimidated to like pull my Switch out at a coffee shop because I'm like, all these people are like here working, and I'm just like, you're working. I, I'm working on my inner child. Working on the <laughs> bushes in in, <laughs> in Zelda and. That's true. <laughs> Cutting the grass <laughs> and breath of the wild. Grass. Uh, best games are coffee shop. I think you want to have a small box game. Right. I don't think you want a lot of components. I agree. I don't think you want a really nice board because it might get dirty from the from the table. So maybe mostly card games. Yeah. Um, My first thought was like a deck of cards. Mm-hmm. I was like, you can do so much with a deck of cards. You can do so much. And I feel like sometimes... We forget that. Yeah. Like, Go Fish was the OG. Yeah. I can't tell you how many times I played Go Fish with my cousins. I think in that vein, there's this game called The Crew. I think you've actually played The Crew with us. Yeah, sometime. that was fun. I think that one's really um, great because, yeah, very low setup, almost all cards as far as uh, um, components goes. Um, some games that are more talky. Uh, I think go well in a coffee shop as well. Um, I will say like a classic game of code names or something is really good in the coffee shop. You, you can fit a lot of code names on a two top and uh, go at it there. Um, I'll say I'm, yeah. I'm a staunch bananagrams. Okay. Defender. Bananagrams is a great choice as well. Yeah. There are like, you know, all the little letter pieces, but like it's so easily transportable. Mm-hmm. And um, I actually, fun fact, I hate Scrabble. Mm. Okay. Um, but I love Bananagrams. There you go. Scrabble, I think, is very, as adults, I think we've ruined Scrabble for ourselves. Because I think yeah. as when you get into Scrabble, you start learning the like edge case words and the weird words that only you know are in the dictionary if you're playing with people that don't yeah know it and it's yeah yeah i played with my older brother once <laughs> and he ruined it for me okay so. <laughs> granted i was like 
12 and he yeah. was like 17 and i was yeah. like why are you doing this to me i'm literally a child <laughs> um but are, bananagrams is fine bananagrams are great um, last one for me uh i love playing chess at a coffee shop because i think it that is a little i was thinking about checkers. romantic uh it it just goes with the vibe i think um yeah it can feel kind of douchey depending <laughs> on the coffee shop i'll be honest but uh yeah i really like it i think it's fun yeah growing up we had this little we had like games but they were like magnetic in like a little oh, travel yeah, size yeah, yeah. tin um and chess was one of those it wasn't like full pieces but it had like a little flat magnetic piece nice. with like the figure etched onto it mm-hmm. and we would like play it on car trips and stuff like that yeah, yeah. that was fun yeah, but like, you know, deck of cards, you can play solitaire, you can play go fish, speed. For sure. You know, there's a lot that you can do with just a simple deck of cards that there's a lot of fun games out there. Even like kind of basic games, like I'm, what just popped in my head is like, you remember the chopsticks games that you'd play in like middle school? Yeah, yeah. And you'd like tap the finger and like yeah. different rolls. <laughs> Like that, that was a good game. That's good stuff. That was a good game. Yeah. Anything else? You said that was your last one? Hmm. I don't know. He said alone or with friends. I have not played that many solitaire board games, honestly. Um, There's one from Button Shy Games, which is the company that makes wallet-sized games, basically. And I did used to play, um, I think it's called Sprawlopolis. It's kind of like a, tile laying game and you're building out a city and the way you build it you get more points if you build it certain ways Mm -hmm. and it's just like 20 cards or something yeah it's pretty fun um very easy to set up and very easy to travel with if just put it in some sleeves and yeah i will say like i did also think about azul because azul is just one of my favorite games yeah um and it's one of those kind of like chill games it's not like super interruptive Mm mm-hmm of like people around you but you do have like all the little pieces which could be kind of a challenge yeah it, it depends a lot on the vibe of the coffee shop i think i think yeah. there's plenty of coffee shops where the game of azul going in the, in the corner yeah definitely. Or at least like i know coffee like mm-hmm. gaming shops that are kind of close to us like i feel like everyone i've been to i've seen a copy of azul like yeah. at gaming coffee shops um but i just really like the game yeah it's awesome all right last question tko who's also super active in our discord yes um, we played a lot of uh we've played some rpgs with tko we played lasers and feelings and alice is missing and then one day um we had to cancel a game night on the discord and tko invited me into play phasmophobia have you played phasmophobia no it's like a ghost hunting game that and it's fun. very open-ended and uh her and her family are super into it and i was just being it's the kind of game where there's not lots of instruction so it was like i was going in with ghost hunting experts and they were just telling me what to do and it was Mm -hmm. awesome and i was like i would have never figured this out if you (laughs) were here so it was a good experience that sounds Uh, like a good time yeah what is the most coffee you drink in a day for work i don't know if we At work lately, I usually have one or two cups of coffee, but not f- for the purpose of work. Um, I think the most I've ever tasted was it was days where there was cupping required. Mm-hmm. So it must have been like a Taco Tuesday, which is like the event that the importer does, uh, Inter American does here in town, where you taste coffees. Um, so I don't know. That's maybe like four or five in a day. Some people drink that though. I'll say (laughs) I didn't. So when I was in college, like I didn't, I never drew up, grew up drinking coffee at all. Mm -hmm. Um, like my, really only my experience was just like going with my parents to like the grocery store and getting like grinding the beans there. Yeah. Um, so I was in marching band in college and we had a like a Thursday game like for football. Mm-hmm. 
and football season in Texas is huge. And I was exhausted in my like 10 a.m. class. And I was like, you know what? I'm going to go get coffee. Like, this is what college students do. This is what adults <laughs> do. I'm 18. I can make my own decisions. So I went and got, I didn't understand espresso. I didn't understand how to work coffee. I think I got like a quad shot latte. Okay. And I felt like I was on drugs. <laughs> it is a drug. I was like, I was like shaking <laughs> for like hours. And my friends were just like, like in my section were like, please, please eat. Like how much bread do we need to give you <laughs> to like not be shaking? Yeah. I felt like a chihuahua. Um, <laughs> so that was probably the most uh, significant, but that was only like, you know, yeah. probably four like single shots. Yeah. Um, there was definitely there were definitely times when I was working at the shop where I'd yeah. have like mm-hmm. two or three yeah like flat whites or something especially like if somebody accidentally made something with whole milk I was the only one sometimes that would drink it yeah and there were times where I was just like you know we'll hold on to it if it's not iced for like five minutes and then there were other times where like we'd throw it away like throw it out I just feel really bad throwing like wasting food so like there were times where I would drink at least part of an accidental drink um pretty often yeah <laughs> yeah but it was always like early enough mm. in the morning that like i was like i hopefully i can like get this out of my system before i need to be asleep yeah the only other time i can think of is at a coffee convention and i think it was probably my first one which was coffee fest in dallas and there's all, everybody's a coffee vendor giving out samples and you can suddenly have that must have been the most coffee actually yeah maybe like six or seven cups of coffee when you add up all the samples um that makes sense yeah but i try not to drink too much now one a day two a day and then the weekend i almost always skip coffee just to give myself a little reset um makes sense Sweet. Those were the questions from the Discord. Thank you so much to the four of you that posted. That's that's really fun to have those questions. Um, we're going to try to make that a re- reoccurring segment, but mm-hmm. uh, we had some big ones this time, so uh, enough to make a main topic. Yeah. The last part of the podcast is recommend anything, mostly because we like talking about random stuff, talk about what we're watching, eating, reading, drinking... What have you Anything. got? Anything. What have I got? Um, I finally started watching The Sandman. I know Andrew was really as a fan of the graphic novel and, mm-hmm. and was watching the show uh, as it was coming out. It's really interesting. There's some very uh, weird sections, and I think uh, it's it makes it interesting but also a bit jarring as far as like the pacing and stuff goes yeah basically i i think i'm enjoying that it it's totally not what i expected i kind of thought it was going to be like a superhero show or like anti-villain show thing okay. but um because that's kind of it seemed like that's what the characters were and i'm kind of primed for that now because i feel like that's every other show i watch that it comes out now. yeah um but it's much deeper than that i think so that's cool i'm liking it it's pretty cheesy but I, yeah i enjoy it so the sandman sometimes we need cheese yeah yeah and then house of the dragon i'm all in i i'm oh, man. game of thrones got me back oh so yeah i'm in has me in its clutches <laughs> and i don't i don't watch shows as they come out okay the last yeah. time i did that like consistently was actually season eight of game of thrones oh yeah um it's, it's good it's, i'm it's, i'm very are you have you watched all four episodes yeah okay so i think the next episode is the actor change yeah which i'm kind I'm, of sad about i'm sad I, I got really attached they to did them. really good and i'm great. just very very like interested they have to follow up a great performance so yeah i'm like let's see it I'm yeah excited. and it's also fun that like my best friend's reading the book that house mm. of the dragon's based yeah. on right now and she's just got to the point where she's caught up with the show oh cool so she was giving me like all this background lore that happens like pre 
kind of like what they skip over a little Mm -hmm. bit which like makes sense because like we don't need to see like the entirety of game of thrones again but like she was telling me some stuff and i was like this is insane (laughs) it's insane yeah yeah but like some in these fantasy shows it's like it's always some blonde person who's causing problems (laughs) and i am obsessed with it every time It's it's good it's so weird in game of thrones how it took so long for Jamie Lannister to like become like I don't know I feel like his like season one sins I'd like had in my mind all the time I was like yeah but you're a scumbag for doing this and now there's like Damon oh my and I'm God. like this is an evil dude but I'm like but is he gonna win <laughs> no like we were pretty? talking about it <laughs> We were, we were having like a live group chat watch for the last episode and it was yeah. like I, I don't know if i hate him or if i'm on his side yeah, exactly. and i hate i hate that game of thrones has done this yeah, to me it's again. really weird it's so cool um that's what i'm watching eating uh what am i eating i have been meal prepping a lot lately and i've been making pad crap how which is like Ooh. thai uh ground meat with like basil and green beans but last week i made it and i used mint instead of basil accidentally mm-hmm. like i'm not good i mean it was edible but it was like not what i wanted yeah but i messed up because i i had leftover basil mm-hmm. and then i was like i need to buy some more basil so i bought new basil i used the new basil and used up the old basil. I thought it was the old basil, but it, it was mint. Basil. I'm so sorry. Yeah. So I've been eating that. It's pretty gross. I'm so sorry. Yeah. I mean, it's done. I mean, I finished it. Uh, I have one more little meal prep thing. Um, yeah. And it's overshadowed any good eating I think I've had. I'm so sorry. Week. Um, so don't make that with mint. That's your don't make it with mint. Mint is great. Maybe not for that, or maybe it's a different dish. If it was yeah. named something else, maybe I would have liked it. But okay, yeah. that's what. <laughs> 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 um, How about you? Um, I've actually been reading a lot more recently. Nice. I've read. I finished another book last night called "The Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo." Okay. Um, it was kind of it was like super popular on my corner of the internet a while back and i like came across a copy when i was at the bookstore recently and i was like why not i'll I'll pick it up Mm. and um it started off like super funny and it's not like i normally skew more towards like fantasy sci-fi fantastical stuff Mm -hmm. it's a lot more like actual like possible that it could be a thing and like a autobiography kind of story um i enjoyed it it took a turn like an emotional turn but in a good way it was super funny it was pretty it was well written i enjoyed it yeah that was a good one um i'm trying to decide if i want to start like a big beefy fantasy trilogy next or read another couple of like single books before i get into that so we'll see maybe i'll have a decision by next time yeah um watching i just started starstruck odyssey from dimension 20 um it was between that and crown of candy and their season of crown of candy is super like politically intense and heavy and emotional and i was like i'm not ready for that i need i need something silly and fun which is starstruck odyssey it's cool. hilarious. It's incredibly chaotic. Is that the one they were using that they use that software? Tailspire? Tailspire. Yeah. That is super interesting. Yeah. Maybe one day we'll mess with that for our playthroughs, but Yeah, it was uh, I'm only like three episodes in. But um it's great to see like the original cast doing something like so silly and fun. But like they were so excited to be back all together again. Nice. Yeah. Other than that. Eating anything? I don't know. Uh, I'm back on my fried rice grind. 
fried rice grind. I love fried rice. Okay. I used to Making make it all it the or, time. Okay. Yeah. It's just so easy. It keeps well. I'm not going to get tired of it. What's your fried rice sauce? Soy sauce, anything else? Or? Soy sauce, um, if I feel like it, I'll add like sesame oil or fish sauce. Sweet. Uh, sriracha, some kind of spice. Nice. Sometimes if I'm feeling really crazy, I'll eat it with avocado. Oh. Do you I, make I really rice? Do you make rice thinking I'm going to make fried rice with this or is it usually leftovers? Normally I'll make, so like it, it's kind of like a day before thing. I'll make like two cups of rice and I'll like use half of it for like whatever I'm planning that night and I'll yeah. keep the other half for like fried rice. Sounds good. Yeah. Fried rice is good. I love rice. <laughs> rice and potatoes. I could go on about forever. Yeah. Okay. I think that's all I got. Yeah, me too. Um, thanks so much, guys, for watching. Uh, yeah, episode nine. We've kept to our podcast schedule two times in a row. S tune in next time to see if we make it three times in a row. I'm proud of us. If you... Uh, yeah, if you liked this, please uh, like, comment, subscribe to the channel. We've got more stuff. I just played some uh, new video game for the Video Games for Board Gamers series. We had Honey Heist come out last week, and we've got more stuff in the pipe. We've got you... Treasured Realm dropping in like a week. A week, yeah. Um, and yeah, if you need coffee for game night, you can visit us at manyworldstavern.com. And if you are really excited for the tea launch, Follow us online and sign up for our newsletter to be the first people to get notified. Yeah. Thanks, Catherine. Thanks, guys. See ya.